Hi, my name is Sean Wildermuth. This is Coding Shorts. Today I wanted to talk briefly about the Upgrade Assistant that's being added to Visual Studio. A lot of people are converting their projects from .NET Framework to .NET Core, and the Upgrade Assistant is going to try to assist you in that. This is going to be all kinds of projects, but I'm going to focus on ASP.NET, as I find it quite interesting the way they're going to handle it. Let's take a look. So I'm in a project of mine that is using Framework 4.8. It's all an older project. So it's actually using 4.5, and I had to change the targeting because 4.5 was hard to actually run. But this is a .NET Framework application. It's perfectly runnable. And here's our project working, right? I've got a bunch of different pieces to this, all the different speakers I was going to speak with. This is all going back to, like, 2016. And so... I want to convert this to .NET Core, though, to be honest, I'm not sure I'll actually completely convert this, but let's talk about how we would convert it. So we've stopped the project. Let's go ahead and look at the extensions, because you're going to want to look in your extensions and see if .NET Upgrade Assistant has been added yet. Some versions coming out are having it pre-installed. Some of them aren't. You can always add this as an extension to one of the later versions of Visual Studio. There is a command line for running this as well, but uh, since most of us are going to be in Visual Studio, I'm going to focus on using it in Visual Studio. What this does is it adds a new right-click option called Upgrade. When you click Upgrade, it's going to start this wizard, for lack of a better word, or assistant, that's going to allow you to upgrade it. Now, if you want to upgrade project features, because you're using certain versions of .NET Core already, that would allow you to do that. But that's not what we're doing. We're going to upgrade to a newer version of .NET. I'm going to pick new project because I want to create that secondary project. There's some other upgrades that will let you do it in place in the existing project, but ASP.NET projects aren't them. And it's going to pick your project name with the core afterwards. You can name this whatever you want. You can also pick whether it's going to be the ASP.NET Core Web API which is a project that doesn't support controllers and views. Maybe you want to use Razor instead or the MVC. And because we're using controllers and views, I want it to be the MVC project. I'm also going to pick which version of .NET. These are the versions of .NET I have on my machine. I'm going to pick the long-term support one because we already have enough things that we're fighting against. And this is going to give you a list of the things it's going to do. It's going to first change a bit about the road trip site, your original project, and then it's going to create a new project, adding YARP, adding adapters for NuGet packages, and setting YARP up. So let's go ahead and press finish, and let's watch it do its thing. And there it's done. And once you're done with this, it's going to give you options to upgrade some of these. And what it'll do is it'll copy them into the new project. So let's upgrade a controller. And I have just my home controller here. And let's say upgrade. And it's going to take all of these pieces from the original site and upgrade them in the new project. And notice that because we were updating just the one thing, it actually is adding anything that's related to that. And there's quite a bit that's related to it. It looks like that's done. We can go back to upgrade other projects. And we're going to just close that for now to see what we've gotten. So here is that core project. And so when we look at the way core starts up, it's going to start up by adding the HTTP forwarder. And this is what's going to be used with YARP to actually work here. And what this has done is brought in the controller routes that it knows about that I asked it to upgrade. And then at the end of it, it says map forwarded. And basically saying anything that we are not already capturing because we've already upgraded and moved them over here, it's going to forward it to this project. And so in this way, you can start to move things over. And so if we look at our home controller, this is going to look pretty much the same way it always did, because for the most part, it did what it's supposed to do. We're going to get some things that are not going to work, and that is because some of the changes, like server path, is no longer a thing, and we're going to have to fix those. And so you're going to want to go through, and let's go ahead and build our project. 
We're going to see all the things from the upgraded things that we need to change. One of the things you'll notice really quickly is this non-nullable because the new project has nullable reference types turned on. But this gives you a starting point to actually solve this. You could do this for each of the controllers and therefore it would do it for all the views or all the APIs that you're actually using. To get back there, if you go back to upgrade, it'll take you back to this screen where you can go ahead and upgrade classes, views, and controllers as well. Make sense? So the upgrade assistant isn't going to be a perfect converting of every project and every file and every project for you. This is especially true if you're using something like WimForms or some of these other things. But it does give you a starting point to really dig in and do some of the harder work of moving the files into the right places for .NET Core and doing all the wiring so it'll work. And because you're doing this piecemeal, anything you don't bring over is just going to forward back to the original project. And so this way you can take a mature project and slowly start to adapt to it. Well, I hope you've gotten something on this video. If you have a like, a subscribe, they all really help the algorithm. You probably hear this from every creator, but I think by law I now have to say it at the end of every video. Just a reminder, Coding Shorts has almost 80 videos now on a bunch of different topics, so feel free to look at the channel and see what there is there for you. I hope there is some great content that you will really enjoy. You can find me at sean.wildemuth.com in case you want to hire me for something. You also find me on Twitter and Blue Sky under Sean Wildermuth. This has been another coding short. My name is Sean Wildermuth.